Okay, today we have, uh, today is uh, February the uh, 28th, 2000, and we have here Mr. and Mrs. Indigo from uh, Haxton. Haxton, Colorado. And uh, the reason we're here is we want to interview uh, Herman, who is a uh, World War II veteran. And uh, this is his wife, Helen. And the two of them have been around a long time and friends of ours. And uh, so we're just going to kind of start at the top with uh, Herman and ask him about his uh, war experiences in World War II. And um, so uh, tell us a little bit, Herman, about how you got in the Army and where and um, then what happened. Just run right down through things. Okay, I was drafted April 22nd of 1941, and I was uh, sent to camp. I was in, working in Rockford, Illinois, as a uh, in a factory there, and I was drafted into the service. And then we they drafted me and took me to uh, uh, Marshall Field Armory in Chicago, and that's where I was inducted in the in Marshall Field Armory. And from there, I went to Camp Grant, uh, which was at Rockford, back to Rockford, where I come from. And uh, from there, they, they kept us there long enough to give us our clothes, I'd say maybe two days. And uh, what, what was the date? March? March 20th. Uh, no, no, April. April 22nd. April 22nd. And I went back to Camp Grant. 1941. 41. And uh, then they sent us to uh, Camp Forest, Tennessee, which is between, uh, at Tullahoma, which is between uh, Nashville and uh, Chattanooga, about halfway between both of them. And uh, that's where I took my basic training. And uh, from after we were through with the basic training, and in the summer of, uh, I'd say about the 1st of June, we went on the what they call the Louisiana maneuvers, and uh, on the Louisiana maneuvers, uh, they took us through all kinds of war games, and I was very, me and two other guys were very fortunate. The uh, major wanted us to be in the headquarters companies with them, so all we did is rode around in the personnel carrier, and the rest of the guys had to walk all the time, <laughs> and. Uh, then uh, after the, oh, I got to tell you one real interesting thing. When we were on Louisiana maneuvers, our drinking water was taken out of the lagoons that they saw. They pumped them out of there, out of the lagoons, and uh, they run them through the filters, and they were just as clear as clear could be, but they still stunk. And uh, then they put chlorine in it. Oh, golly, us guys hated that with a passion. And. Uh, then from there on, uh, oh, we went through all, quite a few of the southern states, Arkansas and Alabama and uh, Louisiana. I don't, I don't remember what all states. And then we come up to Texarkana, and I'll tell you a little story about Texarkana. Uh, now, in Texarkana at that particular time, uh, you could get whiskey if you had a prescription. Well, everybody was sick. Oh. <laughs> Made those doctors pretty popular, huh? Yeah, they, they, the uh, <laughs> medics was real popular all at once. And so, uh, uh, if you had a prescription, then you could go down to the liquor store and get your liquor. And uh, everybody got his prescription filled right away. And, uh, of course, then we uh, went about, oh, I'd say we were there until maybe uh, 1st of September, and then we come back to the Camp Forest, Tennessee again, and uh, then we, uh, for a while, we trained recruits again. Uh, I mean, uh, they, for some reason or other, they took a bunch of people away from our outfit, and, uh, and uh, they trained recruits there, and then from there, we were there until, uh, Oh, I'd say November of 42 was when we uh, were at Camp Force, Tennessee, and then we went to, uh, um, oh, 
Camp Forest, uh, from Camp Forest to uh, oh, Fort Lewis, Fort Lewis uh, at the, in uh, Washington. And uh, we, we were there until uh, the summer of 40, I think it's June of 43 is when we moved from there to Camp Clipper, California. And from California we went to Camp Stoneham and then we went over to uh, the Hohen Islands. Now, now, Herman, in your notes, you, t you uh, tell about uh, you guys had to do uh, anti-strike duty one time. Yes. And uh, yes. that was uh, before you were overseas. And um, so there was, there was unrest uh, in the labor, with the labor people in some of these essential industries. They were striking and were threatening a strike anyway. Okay, that was at uh, Alcola, Tennessee, that's the aluminum plant. Uh, that time, uh, aluminum was a very, very precious metal equipment. And uh, before we went to there, though, we had to go to, uh, uh, right after the war broke out, we went to uh, Childersburg, Alabama. And uh, we guarded the munition, munition plant. I don't know why they had it there. I don't think they had over two dozen uh, bombs or anything there. And uh, we stayed there about three, maybe six weeks, I, I guess. And then from there we went to the uh, Alcoa, Tennessee, uh, to stop a strike. And um, if we saw three guys standing together talking, we had to break it up. And that made the guys awful bad because we'd done that. And one day one of the guys says, uh, you tin horns, you, uh, you haven't got the guts to shoot at me. And my buddy pulled his. And we had spring wheels, and he pulled the bolt back and shoved the shell in it. He says, now we got it. We got it. Yes. <laughs> and they never, never gave us any more static. <laughs> took care of that stuff. That took care of that. Huh? All right. So then, uh, in, anyway, essentially you, uh, you went to uh, Camp Stoneham, uh, and now, what was the name of your... Uh, Outfit. I was in the 33rd Division, and I was at first I was in Company C. That's where I was first into, and then when we were in Fort Lewis, I was transferred to Company K. They started up a new company, uh, Cadbury, uh, a new, new uh, outfit, uh, and uh, I was transferred to Company K, and I stayed in Company K until into uh, the Philippines. Uh, no, uh, New Guinea. I was in New Guinea. And uh, then from uh, New Guinea, that's where we, uh, and our main job there in, in New Guinea was not to, uh, not to capture any Japs or anything, but to uh, uh, just keep them from getting away. Uh, they didn't want them to join their old outfits again, or, or to go back and so all new our group, huh? new uh, to their old group again, and uh, so we kept them from getting back to the shore. So now you went, you went to Hawaii, okay, and you were a sergeant of the guard at a radar station there. That was right. your first overseas assignment. Right, right. And tell us about that. Now you talked to the guys there that were there uh, at hope... the time of Pearl Harbor, right? They, the guys that was there when I was the sergeant of the guard there, they were at, uh, uh, they were on the radar and saw the planes coming in about an hour and a half before they got there and warned them right away and nobody done anything about it. And uh, they were just as mad as hops and I don't blame them. Right. And uh, who was to blame, I'm not sh sure, but I have my ideas. And then from there, I went to the, uh, I was the sergeant of the guard there, and then I went to the, I was the sergeant of the guard at the um, uh, bomber base, uh, where they trained the B-25 bombers. And uh, some of those young kids, see, uh, they didn't want anybody over 25 in there. If he was 25, he was too old. And they took these kid, hot rod kids, and uh, they'd come in oh, upside down, wide open, and oh, the general would get mad. <laughs> he would, uh, and he'd drown for a few days, and 
And uh, then as soon as he could, he kicked them out and uh, sent them to the service. I mean, then they went to bomb. And, uh, so where did, those, where did those bomber crews go? They went further into the South Pacific? And they went further into the South Pacific. As a sergeant of the guard, how many people did you have under you? At the radar station, I'd say about approximately 25. And at the bomber base, maybe, uh, oh, I'd say about the same, about 25. Yeah. 25 uh, yeah. guards. Uh -huh. You were in charge of them for a period during the day or all I, the time, or how did it work? Okay, I was, uh, I was over them as the, uh, to take care of, see that everything went, and uh, they got on, the, on their post at the right time, and, and uh, that they got their duties done. And, and until we, uh, mm -hmm. when, when we were over there, why well, we had to uh, uh, also have uh, the kitchen help. And uh, so I had to see to what they got there. And, and my duties was just more or less to just keep order and see that everybody done his job. And so, so you were the leader of that group? That's right. Yeah, okay. Um, okay, then from Hawaii, you went to New Guinea in right. 1943. Right. The summer of 1943. Okay. That's right. Uh -huh. And we were there until, uh, mm, I think it was, uh, now my recollection is getting bad. I think it was in... Uh, you said till 1944 in your notes. 44, uh, that, that would be about right. That is right. Uh, and how, how big a base was that? With the, how many was it? The whole was your whole division there, or what was the deal? Well, uh, on New Guinea, uh, no, not the whole division. I'd say about uh, three companies, maybe three battalions. It could be three battalions of us was there in New Guinea, and uh, how many men would that be? Approximately a thousand, and uh, when. Uh, and then when we went to New Guinea, of course, the whole division went then. And uh, the division was divided up into various places. Uh, I happened to go to Luzon, uh, to, and I landed on the, at Leyte. Uh, not Leyte, but uh, Lu, uh, Lengen Gulf. Lengen Gulf is where I landed. Uh, in fact, my outfit was there the next day after MacArthur landed. In the Philippines. In the Philippines. So you went to, so you went to New Guinea first. Yeah. And New Guinea was a staging area, was it? Well, uh, in a in a sense it was, and uh, but our main duty was to uh, well, first of all we had to unload, unload all the ships for the Air Force. We were the stevedores, and that made us guys real real happy to. Uh, <laughs> I bet. <laughs> We were, they would send us out on, on out for about 10 or 12, uh, 10 days, two weeks, and uh, then when we come in for R&R, &R, we'd go to the ships and unload the ships, and that's how much rest we had. And uh, Now when you went out, did you go out on patrols and stuff like that, or what yes. was going on? Into the jungle of New Guinea. That's right. And you were looking for Japs. We were just wanting to keep them back on and know where they were at and what to do. Oh, I, uh, I got something very interesting to tell you here uh, while we were there. Uh, when we were there in New Guinea, uh, one, of the, uh, one of the Japs gave a surrender, and uh, he spoke real good English. And uh, the, one, the first thing he wanted to know is, uh, who won the Rose Bowl in 40? <laughs> And uh, the guy says, well, what do you know about the Rose Bowl? Well, he named all the players and the coach and everything. So I mean, who darn well that he, he uh, knew what he was talking about. And uh, then they said, well, how in the heck come here in the uh, Japanese army? Well, he said, uh, when I got I went home on a furlough or, uh, 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 to, to see my folks, and when I got off the ship, they bit me with a bayonet. The Japanese did. So they conscripted him forcibly, huh? Yep, right. And uh, he, uh, 
He says, uh, what would you have done if you either got shot or joined the army? I said, he says, I done the only thing I thought I could do. So he joined the army and he uh, never got into uh, any uh, serious combat with any of the Americans or the uh, uh, other Australians. See, the Australians was up there with us in New Guinea. And uh, we, uh, then uh, he was there just a little bit, and then the MPs come and got him from then on and on. Then another thing that happened that was real interesting, uh, I had met a missionary in my home church, which was at Glenville, Nebraska, uh, and uh, they recaptured a lot of, uh, there was a lot of different denominations of missionaries. And the, uh, the um, one, uh, then I, I talked to him and I said to, uh, to him, I says, do you remember being at Glenville? No, he says, I don't remember Glenville. Well, see, at that time they had the uh, academy in Hebron, Nebraska. And I said, well, do you remember? Oh, yeah, I remember Hebron. And he thought, well, I guess I do remember being at Glenville. And that's where I had met him before the war. And, uh, but he was so weak and so sick that he could hardly talk. And we didn't stay with him, visit with him very long. And uh, then uh, uh, that was quite interesting. He was a medical missionary. And he told us that uh, the Japs and the Americans had set the Davies back, the Davies back at least 20 or 25 years uh, because they, up until then, they trusted the missionaries, and if they told them something, it, it was it was right. But after after being deceived by the Americans and the Japs, they didn't trust nobody anymore. And uh, so, oh, and uh, certain tribes over there, uh, when we were there, they were all running around in nude, no clothes, no nothing. It was warm all the time in the land, and. Uh, some of the uh, tribes would be in, uh, in little huts, and this one tribe that we uh, run into, they had a, uh, a building that was made out of thatched roofs, and uh, it was, uh, I'd say, I'm guessing, about 40 feet wide and about uh, 60 feet long, and everybody, the whole tribe stayed in there, and they'd done their cooking outdoors, out there beside the and uh, that was quite a deal. And there were some pretty wild animals over there, some big snakes and big, some uh, yeah, there were big snakes. Komodo dragons and things like that, huh? Yep, yep. Mm -hmm. How big were those snakes? Well, uh, we saw them up to 35 feet long and about 8 inches across. Great big ones. And they never once did they ever molest any of us. They, they come close to us, but they never molested us. We're aggressive. What about those dragons? They're pretty big, weren't they? Well, they uh, or they call them dragons. Liz lizards. lizards. Yeah. They call them lizards. Uh, they were uh, uh, oh, I'd say about uh, five, six feet long, and, weigh, and I'd say they weighed about uh, the same as a hundred and fifty pound pig. They were pretty good sized lizards. How tall were they? Would you guess? Oh, I don't think they. I don't think they stood up over maybe a foot and a half high. Yeah. And they had short legs, you know. Were they aggressive? Would they bother people? They wouldn't no, bother you. Never you bother don't bother them, they don't bother you. No, they left us alone. Okay. And uh, another thing, uh, there was quite a few alligators. I don't think they called them alligators, but anyhow, there was quite a few alligators in those uh, rivers and swamps. And we'd have to go across them. Ever. And uh, I don't ever remember of anybody being molested, but if they'd happened to have been there and somebody had been bleeding, boy, they'd attacked him right away. But uh, we saw, uh, from a distance, we saw them. And there were headhunters there? Yes, they were. Uh -huh. in, the, in the mountains. Cannibals. Uh, cannibals, yep. Cannibals, and, and they were in the mountains. Yeah. And uh, we, never, we never got in contact. But we had orders. We was never to leave for less than uh, three or four of us. And we had to have loaded guns with us when we left the camp there. We, at, uh, on our... On our, our uh, 
uh, on our own time, why we we could go leave camp if we come right back again. And so, but we never run into any of them. And you damn near got killed on the on the. Let's see now you. Uh, let's see in in New Guinea you were in a you were manning pillboxes along the uh, frontier there and uh, along the Waikiki uh, right what? by the Waikiki River and uh, we. Uh, I was very fortunate. Uh, the uh, I was relieved of that duty uh, just the day before and the next night. They, uh, they threw a hand grenade in there and killed four guys, uh, three guys, and, and the other guy, he's, he was way off in Blue Yonder. He was just gone. Okay. So you went to, uh, you were on the south side of New Guinea and then you went to the north side. Did you, how did you do that? Did you, you didn't cross New Guinea, no, no, did no. you went around it? We went around yeah. in a ship. We, Nobody ever crosses New uh, Guinea. We, when we first landed, we were on the south, uh, south east corner of New Guinea, and then we went. Uh, I think that was, uh, and then, then we went around to uh, Finchhaven, and that's where we spent uh, most of our time. Was at Finchhaven, and then we also went to Watke from from it, Finch, Finchhaven to Watke. Now Finchhaven had that been an old Dutch colony or something like that, or? Okay, uh, at one time, uh, I don't know if it still is, but at that particular time, the east half or the east end of New Guinea was under control of the Aussies and the west half was under the Dutch uh, people, the Dutch New Guinea. And uh, when we were in uh, the uh, east half, we, uh, we were paid in uh, Australian money. And we were when we moved over to the uh, uh, West half, we were paid in guilders or Dutch money, and uh, then from uh, oh, there were a, a number of times that we guys would be on the, on the river, which is about uh, oh, I'd say maybe a block, block and a half wide. We'd be washing our clothes on one side and the Japs on the other, and. Uh, uh, in the daytime, they never bothered, but occasionally at night they would uh, spook us, and they kept everybody stirred up all the time. And, uh, but they were cut off from their. Uh, you guys had cut them off. Uh, that was the so ploy. They that they so they kept isolating these Japs and these uh, right. islands, isn't that right? Right, that's correct. Yeah. And so that they couldn't join their old outfits again. Yeah, they want to get rid. And uh, I'm sure that a lot of them starved to death. Because they had no, uh, unless what they uh, captured there, they, they had nothing to eat other than that. And our job was just to contain them. And uh, so then from there you went to the Philippines and landed on the Philippines right on. the day after MacArthur right. walked on. Right. Returned, yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. And you, where did you land? You say you landed on? Uh, um, Lingayen Gulf. Lingayen Gulf, okay. In Lingayen Gulf, and that's where MacArthur landed. And so then you went inland there into the mountains? Uh, well, our first job when we got inland is to keep the natives from fighting one another. Right. And the, the various villages, they, they said that they, uh, people in the other village would, uh, would spy uh, for, for the Japs on them. And, uh, and they were fighting one another all the time, so we had to go in there and straighten them out. And that was our very first job. And then from there on, we went right on up the mountains, up to, uh, uh, to Baguio. And we had to go around the, uh, we couldn't go up the road for the simple reason that it was, uh, that it was uh, fortified so bad. And they had mined and everything else. And our job was to go up the back side of it, and quite often, uh, we would uh, slip in behind the pill, uh, their pillboxes and uh, use the flamethrowers on them and one shot of that and that would be the end of it. And uh, if they weren't burned to death, they were uh, suffocated. And uh, then, uh, oh, the day that I got hit, the day that I got hit there on the mountain, 
uh, we could see the very tops of the buildings in Baguio. And about two days later, they, my company went on in the Baguio. Baguio was a summer vacation town of the kind of a mountain town for right. the wealthy Filipinos, right? Right, right. Mm -hmm. And that uh, that was it. Never froze there, but it got quite chilly up there on top of the mountain. And now the guy that the Japanese that wounded you, rifleman, I presume. Yeah. Um, where'd you get wounded? Can we I talk about that? Right here. I got wounded in my arm, right here, uh, right here. In your left forearm. On um, my left forearm, and the uh, this was in oh about mid morning when this happened, and uh, then in the air, about noon or so, I the company commander come to me and he said, uh, I have one of two things you can. He says, you can either stay here or you can uh, uh, take the wounded and the casualties back to, uh, back to the headquarters and to the uh, first aid station. I said, give me a carbine and we're on our way. <laughs> so you led those guys out of there. How many guys did you lead out of there? I, uh, well, I don't really know. See. Uh, when I said uh, they had, uh, the company commander told me that uh, he had plenty of gooks, that's what we call the Filipinos. He said that they'll carry the, they'll carry them and take care of them. I'm guessing that I, uh, maybe 20. 20 wounded men. Wounded in casualty. Yeah. And, uh, oh. so, well, uh, the, my army buddy that come to see me this last November, uh, he was wounded, I was wounded on April the, uh, I mean on, uh, um, yeah, April the 12th, that's the day that Roosevelt died, and my, uh, one of my buddies was wounded on April 13th. Now, I was sent to Mortai, and, uh, he was sent to, uh, Leyte, and unbeknownst to each other, I didn't know where he was, he didn't know where I was, and when, when the ship was back, we both, uh, landed in Manila and waiting for the train to uh, to uh, take it back to Baguio and uh, I, we, I, we were in the station and somebody wrapped me on his shoulder. He said, Herm, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? I said, I'm waiting for a ride. Well, I am too. Where are you going? Go back to the company? I said, yep. He said, well, that's where I went. And, uh, we got up to Clark Field and the Little Devils had sabotaged that train. In other words, uh, they, they think that they would have worked and pulled the spikes out. So the engine and the first car got by and then the rest of them, they were demolished. See, the uh, uh, Japanese, I mean the Filipino uh, 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 train were a narrow gauge, and you sat lengthwise, not crosswise. And uh, we uh, we got to Camp Clark, uh, yeah, Camp Clark, which is the uh, with uh, Air Force Base there at uh, on the on the Philippines. And when we got there, well, then they hit that, and and it just demolished the uh, cars and. Uh, they were all old wooden, wooden cars, and I seen guys with, uh, with timbers running from, starting at their legs, running all the way through their body, way on up through. I never want to see that again. So, uh, so you, so, but then they, you were hurt in that train was, accident, right? I was hurt in the train accident. And, and so then you went to uh, Clark, no, uh, I, the hospital near Clark Field? No, the Army had a different one. Uh, they, uh, they didn't send, send us guys to the Clark. Uh, they sent us to a different hospital. I don't know where it was at. I, don't, I, I couldn't tell you that. Okay. But I was there for about uh, five to seven days. And finally they said to me, we can discharge you, but you'll have to find your own way. And I said, just give me a discharge now. I'll find my way. Take me to the road. Back to your old outfit. Yep. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had hardly got out to the out to the uh, road, and here come an army chaplain. 
So what were you packing with you when they kicked you out of, out of the hospital? Did you have your rifle and did you did you have a rifle? You didn't have a rifle even. Didn't even have nothing. Did. All I had was the clothes that I had on my back. And you were going to try and make it up to Budgie or wherever your outfit was. Well, see, by that time uh, everything was pretty well cal calmed down when I got there, back to Baggio. Uh, there was a few stragglers still in the mountains, and the guys would go out after them, but uh, they didn't. Uh, they didn't give much static anymore. And after I got back to the company, why, uh, uh, well, the, this chaplain knew exactly where I was going, so he took me right up to my company, and, and um, uh, he said that, uh, well, uh, he told me where to go to the headquarters and everything. See, I'd never been there. I, when they got there, I, I, was, I was in the hospital. and. Uh, they, um, when I got to the company, the company commander says, I was never to go out again. <laughs> That's right, because you, you had, uh, you'd had so much combat and you'd had so many, uh, so much time that, uh, that you weren't to go out anymore. Right. And so all I did, I was in charge of quarters and seen to it. Uh, uh, sick lame and lazy, lazy, <laughs> lazy got to the medic, and uh, we, uh, I just done odd details around and mostly goof off, I, and then uh, uh, pretty soon they sent us to the, uh, to, to the uh, debarkation camp, and uh, when we got got to the debarkation camp, they wouldn't even let us go out on uh, KP or duties or anything. They said that we had to wait there until the orders come to go. And if we were, weren't there, we would miss our turn. And, and uh, there must have been, oh, I'm, I'm guessing now, maybe uh, several hundred of us there, at least. And uh, we... Uh, out of that whole bunch, there was the one that went AWOL, and uh, we stayed there. And uh, then the, we were supposed to have gone on the ship the next day, and then uh, MacArthur stopped all transportation because uh, they had dropped the bomb on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, and uh, he stopped all transportation. And the division that I was with, the 33rd Division, was one of the first ones to go into the, Jap into the Japanese islands. And, uh, of course, I was relieved of all that. I didn't have to go anymore. But uh, we, uh, then uh, we, we waited another two weeks. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, that was the hardest two weeks I spent. Just sitting there doing nothing, and, and you couldn't do go anywhere. Couldn't you just sat there and idle time, and that is boring. It gets to you, and uh, pretty soon then uh, they left the ships. Got a ship for us to go, and this ship was named Kanimla, a Dutch ship, and it was run by uh, Indian help and the Indian help, and uh, we, uh, we were so many of us that we, we'd go to breakfast in the morning and we'd get right back in, in, uh, in line again for the supper, otherwise we'd miss our turn at supper. How many guys on that ship? I'm guessing maybe 5,000 of us. 5,000, jeez. On one damn ship, no wonder there was problems. God. Yep. Stacked in there like sardines. Uh, piled five high, if you can imagine that, in a porthole. Mm -hmm. And uh, when they signed this, uh, see, we were on the water already, when they signed the uh, peace treaty on the Missouri, and uh, we, uh, we uh, got to open up the portholes and, and uh, doors and everything, and we thought we was in heaven. <laughs> okay. Oh. So then you got to, you got back to San Diego. Yep. And uh, debarked. 
and that from there they, uh, each one of us was asked where we wanted to be discharged. So I wanted to be discharged at Fort Logan at uh, Denver, which is now uh, not there anymore. But I was discharged from Fort Logan. And uh, the reason I wanted to be discharged from Denver, see the Union Pacific, no, the Burlington, I wanted on the Burlington, I, uh, to get to Hastings, Nebraska, that train run right from Denver to, uh, to Hastings. And that's why I wanted to go that way. I could have been discharged anywhere I wanted to, but uh, I, that, the reason I've done that is because I want to get right home. And that, Now, Herman, you ordered. You were given two purple hearts, right, and two bronze stars for right. bravery in combat on the battlefield. Now, and also, let's let's have uh, let's show him this, hold this flag up that you took off that guy. That, uh, my that, army buddy uh, got him, and uh, he took it off of him, and uh, I uh, he gave it to me after I got out, got back again. Just hold that up for you guys. Don't hold it in front of your faces. That's it. But that, that, now that, that flag was typical. That was carried by, uh, uh, by the, the Japanese. Uh, they carry those flags. And, right, right. And Helen, you told us that that flag, uh, you had somebody look at it, and that's names on there. People signed their names on there. Let's mm -hmm. imagine the people signed their names, and then the guy carried it as a right. kind of a thing. Momentum, you might Mom call it. Yeah, uh-huh. That's a, and but that's really means a lot to you because that's the guy that tried to pick you off, right? And your buddy got him. Yep. And then he he took the flag off the Japanese and gave it to you later. Is that correct? Right after you come back from the hospital. Yeah. Right. Now show us these. Uh, just uh, show us these uh, medals that you got. Well, I can't see them, but. Uh, well, I'm gonna give them to you. Sure, you'll hold them. Okay, there's your, there's your purple heart. Yeah. That's a purple heart. And this is your bronze star. Can you show those, sir? Oops. Maybe you want to do it here. There we go. Mm -hmm. Put it down a little bit. Like that? Yeah. And the purple heart. I got a hold of it. You can. Okay. Okay, that's good. Ten seconds. I come home and uh, I farm one year at Hastings, and the fellow that I was farming for was. Uh, do you remember the Goldenrod uh, Pump Factory? Yeah, I yeah I, I remember the Goldenrod. Yeah. Okay, well uh, then he died, and uh, that made... then his son-in-law took over, and he was an alcoholic. And my brother says, "You don't want to work for him. He's a." The devil can't get along with it. And uh, he had a section of land here in Colorado. So Hell and I moved there in 47. And you've been there ever since, huh? Yeah. <laughs> and you raised your kids. How many kids you got? We have two adopted boys. Two adopted boys. That's wonderful. I met your boys. They're nice. Um, and the one was... Uh, month old, the one that's doing the farming now, and the oldest one was nine weeks old, wasn't it? Yes, mm -hmm. and he's uh, teaching in uh, Morgan County, uh, Morgan Community College up there at Morgan. Great, okay. And they tell you how to do things, I suppose. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> They've been wonderful, though. Okay. We've had, I don't know what we do without them. So, uh, so you, uh, okay. I think that's enough. Have you got yeah, something else you want to tell us? Flew you out, and it flew you out. Oh, I have a, yeah, just. a good, big surprise. Uh, Helen and I went to a uh, Luther Lehman League convention down there in Colorado Springs, and uh, uh, after the uh, Speaker. Well, after after the the, service, uh, the meeting was over with, why the speaker's wife says to him, "Why don't you guys have supper with us?" And uh, 
Something was said about being in service. Well, when did you go to service? Well, I went in 41. Well, that's when I went. Well, then he, uh, I said I was in Louisiana Manures. That's where I was. And uh, he, uh, he uh, said that uh, since he was the uh, only one that could type, he become company clerk. And uh, when the orders come down that the uh, that the um, anybody who could pass a Air Corps test could become pilots if they wanted to if they wanted to take the training. And so he said to his buddy, he said, "Why don't we try for it?" And they both passed it. They both got to be pilots. Only he become this fellow become a uh, a transport and uh, not to West Point, but to the Air Force Academy and. Uh, went to school there for a while, and him and five, uh, four other guys were the guys. Now, he didn't tell us that. His wife did. Uh, he and uh, four other guys are the ones that started the disaster nautical program. Hmm. And he's a fellow that, oh, he, uh, then Helen said something about being wounded, and he said, what day was you wounded? And he said, uh, April the 12th, the same day Roosevelt died. Well, who, to, who took you to the hospital? Or where did you go? And I said, I went to Mortai. And he said, uh, Mortai? Well, who took you? I said, I have the biggest idea. I said, they packed us in the back and the, and the pilots and, and the crew was up front. And he laughed. He said, that was me. <laughs> Isn't that funny how that all crosses over? Yeah. Roosevelt died the 12th. Yeah, kept he it knew what he, was, what he was doing. Doing that day. And yeah. see, they took us out the next day, but he knew what he'd done the next day too. And he was the only one that uh, flew, flew out anybody uh, on the next day. And so it had to have been him. Couldn't have been anybody else. Right, <laughs> right. What was his name? Is his name. And, uh, his wife was a nurse, little old Jeep, <laughs> and that's where he proposed to her, and that's where they got married then in the Philippines. And she, she was a nurse and he was a pilot, huh? And he, well, anyhow, yes. But I don't see how you remember all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Some things you don't forget. <laughs> and when the bullets fly around you like hail, you don't forget it. They're not bending it. And that book tells